Hello and welcome back to Alleyway Conversations. Once again, I'm Andrew. And it's spooky season. Heck yeah. First uh, <laughs> first week of Halloween. Yeah, dude. Um if so... you, Yeah, if you remember our last uh spooky season. Yeah. Patrick's uh, uh kind I'm of really, excited. really into horror movies and we tend to talk about movies more than anything else. So, Halloween is a really good excuse for me to talk about horror movies, and I get really excited about it. You so, need an excuse to talk about horror movies? Well, I could do it unprompted like a normal horror movie fan, but come on. Is there such a thing as a normal horror movie fan? <laughs> are, are we going to sit here and question everything that I say and do, or are we going to talk about fucking creature features? That's right! Yeah, man. Uh, so Creature Features were, is like an affectionate nickname for any kind of movie in which there is like a monster or a group of monsters. Uh, it was around before, but it really gained popularity thanks to the Gremlins movies. So for what? You'd say about mid, mid 80s is when they really started to yeah, explode? Yeah, and it was at that point that we got... Oh, just a crazy amount of them, too. Now, would you consider, like, some of the old monster movies from Universal to be creature features? And and I don't mean, like, the singular monsters, like Dracula or Frankenstein, but what about yeah, a lot of some of the like old, like, Dracula versus... meets Frankenstein and yeah. stuff like that? Uh, I wouldn't just because they have to be somewhat animalistic, I think. Not very intelligent. Yeah, and uh, you cannot tell me Bill Lugosi is dumb. He has never played a character in which I believe he was dumb. I mean, he made some great chocolate cereal. Oh, that too. <laughs> which I always found amazing that Bella Lugosi actually used to voice yeah. Count Chocula uh, until he died. Yeah, they got uh, Bill Lugosi to play Count Chocula. They got um, Igor Karloff. Igor Karloff. Boris Karloff? Uh, Boris Karloff to play <laughs> Frankenberry. Did you get your stereotypical Russian names mixed up? I guess so. But um, they also got... I forget who did Booberry. But he was also like one of the... Like, uh, he, I believe he was like the guy who... He didn't play Igor. But he played a character very similar to him. Okay. Uh, but so, yeah. Uh, so... We already talked about the very first creature feature we started with, which happened to be Gremlins 1 and 2. Yeah, and Gremlins were... Gremlins will always be, like, the foundation block. You either like it a little bit more or a little bit less than Gremlins, I think. Uh, usually a little bit less, because Gremlins is an awesome movie. I, I had watched the first one, you know, over a decade ago. It wasn't until we readied ourselves for this podcast that I ever saw the second one. Uh, yeah. And the second one, I feel like, is different, but not necessarily worse. I, I did like a lot of the supporting cast that yeah. they had in the second one. The main, the main <laughs> guy... I like the cutaway could... with uh, Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, I had yeah, forgotten about that. I did not. I, the, uh, I was really into, uh, like, wrestling as a kid, right. so... The, the CEO of the building that this all takes place in, I like him. He, uh, he, I, is, uh, he is a stand-in for a certain character that may be a big deal in New York. I have no idea who you're talking about. Donald Trump. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know anything about New York other than it's the Big Apple, and there tends to be a lot of people there. Uh, yeah, no, the guy was clearly a stand-in for Donald Trump back in the 80s. He was young, he was ambitious, he was filthy rich. And, um... Kind of goofy! Not necessarily the brightest, but definitely had, like, that very, like, 80s Charisma. businessman... Very charismatic! Too. Yeah. Always seemed to be able to take a bad situation and, and put a spin on it. So he, I, I liked him. I liked the fact that um, the the old couple from the first one didn't die in the first movie. Like, for years I thought they did. Yeah, yeah. We sat there and watched it, uh, like, while we were working up to it. And I was like, did they die? And then we watched the second one and it's like, oh, guess not. Hey! And I, I really liked it. The fact that... Uh, quite a few people from 
Uh, Gremlins 2 seem to be in Little Soldiers. I recognized uh, a lot yeah, of Small people. Soldiers was, it actually had the same director. Oh, okay, yeah. that would explain a lot. And uh, with that in mind, yeah, you got the delivery guy, I believe. Joe Dante is the director. Okay. And I cannot remember, like, that guy's name. Uh, but he tends to play that very, like... It's weird. I feel like he was born in his mid forties. Are you are you talking <laughs> about the head of security or the old snowplow guy? Uh, the old snowplow guy. All right, because yeah. the the head of security, I've seen him in a couple of movies. He always plays the, oh, what do they call him? The straw man. Very oh, well. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm sorry if they couldn't have got who they did for the first Ghostbusters movie to play the EPA agent, I think he would have done great, too. Oh, my God. I can't Excuse me. Down. I'm here to sound important and to throw my weight around and screw everything up. Yeah. Well, you're doing a bang-up job there, guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you are just the best at what you do, and I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, you're supposed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I like that. Uh, and, that and I think some characters... Uh, I feel like Bill Murray's really good at being that, like, oh, what a sleazebag. But you still like him. But, yeah, you actually do endear to him quite a bit. Uh, oh, crap. I'm trying to think of a really good one. But, yeah, there's some there's some actors who are just really good at just playing a total jerk-ass. Tom uh, Cruise? Well, that's not acting. But, uh, <laughs> no. No, I don't... I, Personally, I've never liked Tom Cruise. Uh, again, we were we were actually talking about this in the car. I think he's made a couple of really fun movies, like Mission Impossible and Top Gun. Wasn't um, he in the remake of War of the Worlds? He was, and I... Yeah, but that, well, that was a movie <laughs> yeah. that happened. Yeah, let's let's dismiss this as quick as the public did that War of the Worlds got a reboot. Um, you know, if I'm going to watch War of the Worlds, I, I kind of want to see if I can find the old uh, radio drama that uh, that he that personally awesome. did. Help me out, I'm trying to remember the guy's name. Uh, it's right on the tip of my brain. He was like... He, he made F is for fake, too. I actually watched a review of that not too long ago. Oh, okay. And he was the he was the influence behind uh, Brain from Pinky and the Brain. Yeah, and um, it is lost on me. Man. Right, I'm we we sorry. can't think of his name. <laughs> yeah. but we apologize, but I'm going his voice, uh, his voice is amazing. I yeah, could probably I, listen to that for hours. You know, uh, I'm just saying, um, if more guys sounded like him, I, I could probably become gay if I keep my eyes closed. <laughs> Wear a blindfold. Oh god, that sexy voice. I, I don't know. I, I I feel like there's a couple of guys that's like, it's not gay if it's Jason Momoa, kids. Or Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, are you king? It's totally not gay if it's Ryan Reynolds, because every straight man on the planet wants to bang Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, go no figure! <laughs> so... Uh, so we had fun with that. Yeah, um, we had a lot of fun. Uh, we, we watched one that I found out about ten years ago, and we just got around to watching it. Oh, I, of course, am talking about the Velocipaster. Oh, yeah. So Velocipaster was something that you did show me, like, a picture of something like five years ago. Yeah, and, and I was like, "Oh my god, we gotta watch this!" Because it, it had a picture and the synopsis, and you're reading this, and just every few seconds, what? Yeah. Wait, what? Um, no, seriously, what? I, I I feel like it was done like with a good heaping spoonful of irony. Uh, they definitely didn't take themselves too seriously. No, Thank they got God. they got goofy with it. They knew what they were making, and they had fun. Also, yeah. the soundtrack was amazing. That's where ninety percent of the budget went. It, yeah, like there was not a single track I would not want on my MP3 player if it was ten years ago. But um, can I say my so much? I mean, if it was like thirty years ago, I would actually go out and buy the original soundtrack on on CD. Man. But yeah. it's... You remember uh, that you... before every single movie? Like, if you like the music, check out the soundtrack. I 
No, the movie was terrible, but the soundtrack was great. Yeah, yeah, Waterboy's a great example. Like, not an amazing movie, but God, that soundtrack. Right. So like the Velocip the Velocipaster. Um, uh, yeah, the guy. Velocipaster. Oh God, the guy gets a cut on his hand and picks up a rock. The rock gives him magical powers I, to turn I think it was into supposed a velociraptor. to be a fossil, to be fair, but that doesn't make any more sense. I don't know, because remember the backstory? Oh, back in the days of old China, there oh, were yeah. many lizard warriors. Yeah, and they, really? do, and they do not conceal the fact that it's like China, Michigan. Yeah. Like, the, this is the, the one, US. The only, this is supposed to be like... I'm guessing like the Yakuza uh, or the triads, triads or triads something or like Chinese. that. There's one there's one Asian looking guy. Yeah. And yeah, he looks like he should be in the Bronx or something. And, and everyone else is the whitest people oh, yeah. you can find in like a Barnes and Nobles. Yeah. Like, I think they just went through a food court in the mall when they went, Alright, uh grab him, grab him. Oh, he's totally fucked up looking. Grab him too. Yeah, yeah, like they Again, it feels like they did not want to take this too seriously at all, and they had a lot of fun making it, obviously. Uh, I really like at the beginning, there's just like, when the car explodes, <laughs> oh, it just like... It uh, says, it, uh, uh, car like, on fire. Yeah. Yeah. Insert, pretend, car on fire. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, we didn't have the special effects budget to have a shitty fire effect in front of a car and two people. So just it pretend was, it's happening. It was like the very first five minutes of the movie. It just establishes the tone immediately. Just like, yes, we know this is a shitty movie. We're going to make it anyway. We don't have a choice, yeah. Yeah. The, and the, I, I, uh, I love their commitment to it. And when he turns into a velociraptor, <laughs> the fact that the... Remember, remember those blow-up T-Rex oh, costumes yeah, you see? Was, yeah, that was yeah, exactly those what those look was. better than the Velociraptor did in this movie. I swear to God, okay. it was a... They made it out of... I'm it, fairly certain they went to a Spirit of Halloween shop and bought a Velociraptor costume and they just put this guy in it. Well, it's the only way to really justify that. But, uh... But it was again, still great. They, they embrace it. They're like, yeah, again, we we had the budget of like your average night out. What you want? <laughs> so, how much money could uh, could you make uh, that that you made this movie off of? Well, you see that used Honda over there? Yeah, we couldn't afford that for our movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it uh, it really does just sort of like how how much profit can you make out of this movie? Well, we spent like 20 bucks off of it, so if we get like five people to watch this, we're making a profit. Right. It, <laughs> it did not take much. Yeah. Uh, it was the, really, really fun. Uh, the and, characters were all amazing. Right. And come to find out, you actually knew the main actress. Yes. Uh, I, I met her online. Uh, we're kind of friends because she's this weird communist chick that makes me laugh. But, uh, yeah, uh, she is, uh, yeah, she is, her name in the movie is Carol, and, uh, she's really, really, she's really, really, she's like the only sane person in that movie. Yeah. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, like, everybody else so, is losing their minds, and she's like, hey, uh, do you want to help people? Then do it. Yeah. Oh my god, I killed somebody! They were going to kill you first. This was self-defense. Yeah. Okay. Because you would think another priest would be saying, No, no, I think you're possessed. Let me take you to this Satanist I know to perform an exorcism. Yeah, that was Wait, the what? weirdest. You're a Catholic priest. Yeah, no, this is going to take something more powerful than what we have I in mean. hand. Let's go see this weird... I, I swear to God. They took a Satanist... And David Blaine, and put him in a blender, and you got this guy. He kind of remind me a little bit about that one Bowser vids uh, video. You know, uh, he was like, "The great Satan has returned." Oh, it's. I'll have to show you. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. don't know what you're talking about. It's it's this. It, it's a man on the street bit. Uh, the guy is like way too into it, uh, but it's a lot of fun, and it's made me laugh so much. <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, I was I was just thinking, 
Thank God they didn't make a Gremlins 3, because if they followed the formula for late 80s to early 90s horror movies, it would have to take place in space. Yeah. Uh, well, I... I feel like uh, Gremlins 1 was like this really, not necessarily like solidly like we're taking ourselves very seriously, but it definitely felt like a genuine horror movie, and I kind of feel like Gremlins 2 was meant to be lighter and more Kind of fun. more comedic. Yeah, and... I, and the first one was actually was also kind of a Christmas movie. Yeah, yeah, it's one of those Christmas, not Christmas movies, like, you know, uh, I guess Nightmare Before Christmas. You could argue Die Hard. I don't. I think that's a genuine Christmas movie. I enjoy it. Yeah. How about... Ooh, you know what we could have watched for this? And I just now thought of it, and I'm kicking myself. Huh? Krampus. Oh, Because yeah. I've, I've, I've always heard a lot about it, and it seems like a great concept, but... I mean, we can, we can do, We can like, do a Christmas movie about, like, we, Christmas horror. If you want, fun. we could do a whole Christmas month, but we'll talk about that later. We don't want to get our audiences... This old, so. is October, and, yeah, and right freaking now, Christmas invades too soon as it is. Right now, it is spooky season, so we are going to talk about spooky stuff, like little Muppets, they're... Kid smoking and oh god bouncing basketballs <laughs> uh yeah we ended up watching just going on like we ended up having to take a break from it just because it was too much but we did end up watching all five critters movies oh god i forgot about i don't i don't want to talk about the fifth one i had forgotten about the, the fifth, fifth one, one. So, the fifth one was a reboot. It was not a continuation of anything. Uh, it did have a recurring actress. Uh, but at the same time, like, this wasn't the same character as she was playing in the first film. Yeah. Um, it was... It always felt like... I, I kept on just like, dude, you were... I am embarrassed for you. <laughs> Stop talking now. Right. Constantly. Yeah, and like, it, the script was just so cringy. It really was. It So, the last Critters movie, Critters 4, took place in, what did we, what did I, we find it, 92, like, 93? Uh, well, the very last one took place in like 23 no, 2019. Ah. Yeah, and when you have that big of a gap, that was that's over 30 years. And if you don't have any of the pe original people... Uh, they had one of the original people. Just one. Yeah. And she was only in the first one. Yeah. It was kind of a small character. It yeah. was the mom. Yeah, yeah. The mom in the first one is also the special agent in the reboot. Is she a special agent, or is she just some woman who happens to have a device to hunt these things down. Yeah, that's probably it. She just, like, digging through a yard sale, like, eh. Right. Never know when I'll need one of these. <laughs> I mean, I don't even know if it's supposed to be the same character. They don't even really say her name. They don't uh, mention anything about the D. first movie. Uh, her name is D in the reboot. I forget, but I... While well, the actress's name is D Wallace, uh, I don't think she... I don't think her name was D in the original movie. Okay, so this so, it, totally the fact, different character just happens to be the same actress. Okay, okay, that's probably that's completely so stupid. Yeah, probably so. There's some teeny tiny connection. Any anything to try to make it legit? It it is it was it, terrible. It is not working. Yeah, I'm sorry. I remember the Gremlins and as I being. I can't help but feel bad for the actors. Like everyone, like it just like this is. There's a lot of younger people, so it kind of feels like it might be someone's first movie. None of them are doing well because they're just given a script that is just like awful. Yeah, it, it kind of feels a little bit like Life is Strange. Like, they tend to have, like, 50-year-old guys trying to write teenage girls. Right. It just comes out stupid. But, um, you know, it's it's amazing. You can tell that uh, Critters, which are basically, um, they are the size of basketballs because yeah. that's the model they use. Yeah. So uh, they, they do we... curl up into a ball. So I will admit, for the special effect people... It was really easy. They literally had, like, 
a dozen guys yeah, take basketballs know. that they glued fur and porcupine needles on, and hey, we need them to chase. Roll them down the hill, yeah. and that's all it was. Yeah, we've been talking about critters this whole time, but we haven't really like pointed out what a critter is. It's a testicle with teeth and hair. Yeah, more or less. They're from space. They're uh, considered like this huge threat in the first movie, right? Yeah. Um. It seems like the reason they're considered a threat is because first off, I think they can eat anything, and once they get enough food. They start laying eggs, and I'm assuming, you know, it's 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 not as bad as the gremlins where you get them a little wet and there could be a thousand of them, but they can reproduce extremely quickly. They are very violent, and they'll they'll eat people. Or if you get like yeah. two or three hundred of them, we can get into a giant ball, which was yeah. kind of stupid. Yeah, um, it was. God, I remember. Because, like, you're already, like, that happened in Critters 2, and by the time we got to that movie, you already established, yeah, like, fuzzy basketballs from space are here to kill us all, but Terrence Mann will save us all. Yes. Because Terrence Mann is the closest thing I've got to Tim Curry in this movie. Just let me have it. Is Terrence Mann happen to be the, the ginger-headed boy? Uh, no. Terrence Mann is, uh, Ugg. Oh, yeah. yeah. Which happens to be a space bounty hunter here to kill the Krites, which is what they're actually... Yeah. Their official name is the Krites. Everyone just calls them critters. Yeah, because nobody really knows about that on Earth. They just like, I don't know, some critters. <laughs> right. And, and of course, Charlie is in all four movies. Cause uh, yeah, we're not was... going to... You know what? From now on, the fifth movie, it doesn't exist. I don't, was, I'm not uh, going to recognize that it. That was Don Offer. Uh, he was really, really great. He, uh, he really did tie all the movies together. Him and Ugg are the only ones in every movie. Other than the fifth one, but... Again, we don't, we don't talk about yeah. that. Um, but yeah, I just kind of feel like they had... I Okay, so in the fourth one, the fourth one is set 50 years in the future. In space! In space, yeah. Because that's where all horror movies went to, to die. Yeah, like, this is the final frontier, because you're never making another one of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you uh, wait 20, 30 years, just like Leprechaun. Or fucking Critters. But, yeah. uh... So, and, and here's, uh, here's an interesting cast you definitely didn't know, I'm sure. Leonardo DiCaprio is in Critters 3, and yeah. it is the very first movie he ever appears in. Yeah. Before this, he had been in commercials. I think it might have even said something about him being in a play, maybe? I didn't check that out, but I'll take but, the word for it. But it is the first movie he ever played yeah. in, and according to him, I want people to forget I was in that movie because it was god-awful. See, and... Uh, even by Critter's standards, like... Three was uh, weird. Three was, like, the one you can forget about. Yeah. Three was the one... Because, like, uh, two actually was, like, a really good... One was a really good establishment. Two, two was a really just, good continuation. Yeah, it expanded Critters. upon it. it. It did more. And then... Uh, four, like, it's out in space. It gets wicked goofy. And you just appreciate everything about it. You just embrace the goofiness. And then three point. is... Three it, is just there. It's, it's not okay. It's not the 2019 reboot. I'll give it that. Well, yeah. <laughs> if we were going by just the first four movies that were, like, all in the same universe, three would definitely... It's, it's pretty much like Return of the Jedi. Uh, you watch it and you're like, well, it wasn't as good as the first two. And yeah. then you watch, like, the... Prequels. Episode one, the prequels, and it's like, okay, That's Return of the Jedi wasn't that bad at all. Hey, and then you watch the sequels. Yeah. Oh, uh, you know what? I'm gonna rewatch even the prequels at this point. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, like Critters Three was just kind of it was a, it was a forgettable part of. A very memorable series, like, people who've seen Critters remember Critters. Yeah. 
Yeah, like, you, if you watch it, you'll definitely remember it. Like, you may love it, you may hate it like Leonardo DiCaprio, but uh, you definitely remember that it happened. Yeah, I mean, I wonder if he would have been happier if he was in the second one. Because, let's see, Critters 1 had a cast of, what, less than a dozen people? Uh, yeah, it was uh, clearly, like... I wouldn't necessarily say, like, Sam Raimi levels of clearly someone's first movie, but it was close. Because, like, you know, Evil Dead 1 had, like, a cast of, like, six people. Yeah. Uh, it was done, like, in, like, Sam Raimi's dad's house with Sam Raimi's dad's car. I was gonna say, I think that car was the most expensive thing in that movie. Uh, fun fact about that car, that is in every single Sam Raimi movie ever made. I don't remember him in Doc. I don't remember that car in Doctor Strange. It, I don't either, but it probably was in there. Uh, it was I definitely mean, in the, like, Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies, because that was what Ben, uh, Uncle Ben drove. No way. Yeah, it's the exact same car. Holy crap. Yeah. That's that's fascinating. I know, right? You know what else is in every uh, Sam Raimi movie? Uh, Bruce Campbell. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, Bruce Campbell uh, might as well be a creature in of himself. He is. It's the chin. The chin is. <laughs> yeah. The, the chin, chin has a life of its own. The chin had a special appearance in Critters Six. Um, which does I kind of want that to be a thing now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does his chin turn into a critter, but the rest of him doesn't? Please tell me the whole movie is just him punching himself in the chin. Ah, God damn it. <laughs> uh, I really need to work on my Bruce Campbell. I'm just saying, you know, you, you know, Bruce Campbell in Jaws would be kind of funny. Can you imagine him doing that? Smile, you son of a bitch. I, I can just see, like, him as Ash Williams just like, I'll oh, screw this. And you know, just, like, wandering off to, like, Kansas or some shit. I'm too old for this shit. Nah, nah, this ain't happening. Right. <laughs> so, speaking of Jaws, uh, uh, pro Jaws great. probably the most famous creature feature of all time. Uh, it's the one that, uh, I, again, I kind of feel like Gremlins, like, is the benchmark, but I also feel like Jaws was certainly a predecessor to that. I could see it. You know, there are... I don't know. I, I always heard that Jaws was originally supposed to be a lot more scary. Like, the shark wasn't being as animalistic as it as they wanted it to be. Uh, simply because, you know, the technology for the robotic shark was very limited at the time. Oh, yeah. And not only are you, you know, in a giant rubber shark, it's also in the ocean. There's yeah. a whole host of problems I can see here. Yeah. So, the the one thing that I remember, because I remember being a huge fan of Jaws when I was growing up, I mean, what kid didn't love dinosaurs and sharks growing up? I mean, come oh, on. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm in my 30s, and I still love dinosaurs and sharks. It's <laughs> why we watched Velocipast. Oh, God, yes. So, the thing was, do you remember that guy that was following the Brody kids um, into the lagoon because that's where their dad wanted him to play because it was safer. Oh, okay. When when the shark attacked the second time and got that, that boy. Oh, oh yeah. So, uh, the shark at that point swims into the lagoon and attacks that guy and kills him. Yeah. Well, originally he just kind of goes under. We all know he's dead. Oh, God, isn't that terrifying? Originally, what was supposed to happen was he starts getting dragged. He grabs Brody's oldest son, I think? Oh. And yeah. He grabs the kid, drags him with him for a while, but I guess he tries to get closer to shore, I guess, and then throws him as far as he can as he gets pulled down. And people said, uh-uh, no, that's, that's way too scary. And I'm sitting here like, that'd be fucking awesome. I mean, yeah, that'd be, like, a really big action moment. Um, I also feel like the, like... I, I feel like less is more in that situation, because I really appreciate the fact that you really didn't... It wasn't, like, a graphic movie. 
Yeah, you didn't uh, you you didn't see the shark by this point. You knew what was going on, but we didn't see no. him until later. Honestly, I was somewhat convinced, like maybe this whole time the shark wasn't real. No, no, the shark is very real. Oh yeah, I mean something. Well, I mean, killing all those things. Yeah, but it could have like been I don't know, maybe people just drowning and shit, but. No, no, that was a real shark, that was a real thing. But it's kind of like how in Child's Play, like, the first couple of... Uh, at first, you don't really know if the doll's real or not. Yeah, that that was kind of kind of fun. At the same time, they, they don't bother trying that in the second movie. You're like, we already saw this, we know the yeah. doll is real, just get it over with. Yeah, yeah. Start with the one-liners already. Well, and they do the same thing in Jaws, too. <laughs> Like Speaking the, of, that's right, I forgot. The guy who, who voices in place, oh Chucky. Yeah, he's in Critters 4. Yeah, the Critters franchise had some really amazing people in it. Yeah, yeah. That went on to do so much better stuff, thank uh, God. Like, like he said, they had Leo DiCaprio. Uh, they had... Uh, yeah, they had Chucky. Uh, I feel like Terrence Mann should have done more, but... That was Ugg, right? Yeah, that was Ugg. I mean, he had that wonderful 80s hair. He he definitely looks like he should have been, if not d being in other movies, he should have been standing on a beach somewhere with with a with a, with yeah. a big fan blowing his hair standing there. Yeah. He, do, he, being a model. He went on to uh, model for Harlequin Romance covers. So. Oh, I knew it. Yeah. But, I, um, I don't know. I don't know what Terrence Mann's up to today. I hope he is living his best life and genuinely happy. Because oh. he gave me so much joy. Uh, um, uh, but, speaking of Jaws, did you know there's an actual real-life mystery in Jaws? Uh, what do you mean? So, there is a woman. They found... I, I cannot remember if they found her body and nothing else. Like, nothing to tie to her, or she just went missing and they never found her. I can't remember which. I've watched a lot of these documentaries. The thing is, uh, in the scene where the big fairy is docking um, at... Uh, what it, What is the name of that place? Paradise Point, I think? Uh, yeah, it was something like really... Really, like, over-the-top, nice-sounding. Right. So, but you know the one I'm talking about right after the mayor gets done telling Brody, we will be open for the 4th of July. And oh, then yeah. it shows the big fairy with everybody walking onto the island. In that scene, you see the woman. Oh. Nobody remembers her. Nobody knows how she got paid. They know she was an extra because they saw her. That is literally the only thing they know. They don't know who she is, where she came from, nothing. Yeah. And if I remember correctly, it was... Oh, man, I know I know way too many uh, dead person stories. I, I, I'm i sorry. They're, they're just really cool stories. But I yeah, want to yeah. say they found her up in the hills, dead, like the tags were cut out of her clothes. Her hotel had nothing but, like, a single suitcase with very basic, like, toiletries and clothing, which had all of the tags removed from every stitch of clothing. Yeah, nobody... Yeah. It's a mystery still yeah, to this day. nobody knows who that was. And uh, it was it was just really cool. Um, and uh, you can actually hear from a lot of, like, celebrities from who, like, got their start back in the 70s. Uh, like, it was ridiculously simple. Uh, like, you just, like, walk on set... They're like, okay, here's how this scene goes. The scene plays out, and you get twenty bucks. Yeah. Uh, well, so look there's... at look at Lord of the Rings uh, when they were doing. Um, I think it was the second movie, uh, the with the Battle of, um, was it the Battle of Minas Tirith? The the one with all the orcs. Um. um and uh, there, the th the amazing thing was, is they said not a single orc or uh, army personnel in that movie was CGI. Yeah. They had a ton of extras. Apparently, there was a fairly big uh, homeless population 
Uh, in the in in and Switzerland, like, uh, I think? New Zealand was where I they can't filmed. Remember, yeah. So they were like, like "Hey, get all you, get get all of your homeless friends, bring them down here," and they got them in makeup, armor, and they gave them food and a little bit of money, yeah. and they shot everything with extras, and they they ended up helping out the population too. These are the kind of stories I really enjoy. Yeah. Well, I I have mentioned it. Uh, New Zealand actually does have a serious problem with poverty, so... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, what are they going to do? Export salted, rotting fish? Uh, that's, that's Sweden. Oh, dang it! <laughs> uh, I'm trying here. I'm yeah. trying. Uh, um, but, you know, uh, Jaws is... Honestly, Jaws was probably one of the very first, like, actual horror movies I would say uh, I ever watched growing up. Yeah, that's reasonable. I think mine was probably King Kong, but... Uh, the Jack... No, no, Jack Black came out. Uh, the Jack Black one came out when uh, we were oh in yeah, high school. Oh, yeah, the Peter Jackson one. Yeah, that uh, came out in, let's see, what, 2005, yeah, I, I think? Yeah, I think I was like 15, 16 when I actually did see that in theaters. Oh, it, it was, was okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. It, was, it was fine. I didn't watch the original, but then again... You know, um, giant monster movies never... I never really cared. I didn't oh, watch I was King super Kong. into giant monsters. Yeah, movies as a kid. I didn't care for the Godzilla movies either. Yeah. And I remember trying to get into those because remember, uh, I remember coming back from Job Corps. Uh, yeah. We were at your house. You lived over by the the middle school at that point. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and we got a Godzilla movie. Uh, a. Little Caesar's Pizza and like a 24 pack of beer. And I just remember watching that movie going, That was. I don't have enough beer. It, yeah, it's. It takes a lot. It, it. It takes a lot of like real patience to like sit back and be like, Yeah, it's a guy in a rubber suit. It really is. You can tell. But yeah. I'm okay with that. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, the, I feel like if I grew up with it. Uh, if I didn't grow up with it, it probably wouldn't be the same as it is to me now. Right. It just, and see, to me, n neither my mom or my dad watched movies like that. My mom, my mom was into comedies, which is probably why I'm so big into them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I grew up watching Jim Carrey and Robin Williams and, you know, um, well, I, I a feel lot of like, greats. I feel like a lot of people can really say the same, but, uh, I don't know, like, every now and then, my dad would be watching Godzilla movies, and be like, oh, that looks cool, I like dinosaurs, <laughs> yeah, <Right. laughs> yeah, and, wait, is he breathing laser beams? Yeah, yeah, and, like, there's a giant moth, I really liked Mothra as a kid. See, and I, uh, I kind of liked Radon. Was, is it Rodan or Rodan? Uh, I've always pronounced it Rodan. Okay. That, I think that was the actual movie we watched. The, the twin-headed dragon from outer space. Yeah, it was, it was, it was goofy, it was cheesy, and I think that, I think that might also be why I tend to gravitate a lot towards, like, really low-budget The Troll House well. movies. Uh, Troma? Yes, thank you. I don't know, they're pretty trolly. I mean, it <laughs> certainly <laughs> feels like a troll, but... Uh, yeah, Lloyd Kaufman, the original troll. Right. The one guy who's made all the Troma films. <laughs> and, uh, that will bring us to our last set of movies, uh, The Meg. So, the first one was actually incredible. It, yeah. it, it actually called... It, it was clearly inspired to a degree by Jaws. And, and it you had can Jason, tell that. Yeah, and it had Jason Statham in it. And you can really tell really it cool. was inspired by Jaws because the first movie is amazing and then you can ignore everything. Yes. So, uh, so yeah. So, I'm, I like how there's... And this might be me. There's no throwaway characters in the first Meg. Like, everyone no. that dies that... Everyone, you know, before the, you know, climactic third act scene, um, everyone you know dies. They have screen time. You've had a chance to get to know yeah. them. You've... Um, so I every think, death is actually I think felt. The, 
I think, like, Toshi died in the first, like, 15 minutes of the movie. But he had so I, Yeah, I was, like, really bummed about that. Right? Toshi, oh, you know, I'm writing a letter to my wife, I'm slipping it into my best friend's pocket, I'm yeah. trying to save people, I'm a good... And he, he wasn't a... He wasn't the straight man, he was... He was joking. Yeah, he, he was, was a, goofy. He, he was, was a goofy trying dude. to keep their spirits up while trapped at the bottom of the Mariana Trench, which, which is, for people who don't know, uh, is very is the deepest part on Earth. Unbelievable pressure at those depths. Yeah. It's kind of a nerve wracking situation if you're yeah, down there and you can't get up. It's never a good situation to find yourself in the Mariana Trench. Yeah, you know how many people have been down there? Three. Yeah, the know. the two French explorers that originally did it in what was it the seventies, and then uh, and then I was gonna say Peter Jackson, but <laughs> <laughs> not Peter Jackson. Help me out here. That's that's where a very different Lord of the Rings movie was being filmed. Uh, James Cameron. Yeah, James Cameron actually yeah. built a sub and went down to the Mariana Trench. And it was very cool. And didn't cave in. Yeah, it. Uh, it didn't blow up with a bunch of billionaires on board. Yeah. Missed opportunity, James. Yeah, come on. You could have totally dragged some people with you. Make Avatar 3, and we can just ignore this ever happened. That's right. Um, it. I personally thought it was a great movie. Was... Uh, a lot of the deaths uh, I, were actually kind of fresh and interesting. Yeah. I mean, it's a shark movie. People get eaten by sharks. You wouldn't think um, it would be... Scary, you wouldn't think um, it would be unexpected. That's what I'm thinking of. I don't know. For me, since I can't swim, I, I tend to find a lot of things like in the ocean to be really scary anyway. Oh, yeah. Well, um, a lot of people. Um, I had a friend I used to work with. Because, like, it, and uh, he always. Uh, have you ever seen those uh, bubble houses that that go in the ocean? Oh, oh, yeah. I've, I've heard of them. I. They always looked really cool and yeah, kind of fun. Totally. But he always says, uh, the farthest out I'm getting is to where I can no longer see the bottom. If I can't see the bottom, screw that. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah. Uh, and, and I get even that. if even if you can swim, <clears throat> even if you're a very strong swimmer, uh, the ocean's still scary just because it's so big and there's so much scary stuff in there. I'm I'm sorry. Uh, humans evolved to not be in the ocean a long time ago. You know what can outswim a human? Literally Everything. anything in the ocean. Yeah. Yes. If it's in the ocean, it wants to kill you. The ocean itself will kill you. Yeah. Blue tanks are trying to kill you. They just have a really hard time doing that. Right. You see you see that little crawdad over there? It wants to kill you. It just yeah. it's just trying to it's figure it out. It's not going to, but it wants to. <laughs> it will try. Yeah. So, um, Jason Statham, I would not think would do it, this well. I, I would Hey, to watch Jason Statham do his laundry. Right. <laughs> I didn't think he would be that good in a movie kind of like this. He was amazing. He was oh, phenomenal. Yeah, yeah he, was, uh, he was really great. There was a lot of energy with him and, like, the little girl. Oh, um, that little girl was wonderful. Yeah. So there is, uh, there is a father, daughter, granddaughter thing going on on this station where they're trying to explore the ocean. Because they're scientists. It's what they do. And we established that uh, Jason Statham fell in love with that entire goddamn family. Oh yeah, he meets the brother, uh, the uh, mom ends a, up dying of unidentifiable disease by yeah, the second movie. You know, and he's adopted the little girl. And, yeah. And, uh, you know, it, and I mean, I know it's all acting, but you Genuinely believe, using suspension of disbelief, that this this guy really loves this little girl. Oh yeah, so. she and she was just. I don't know how they could have made her cuter in the first movie. She oh, was. She was oh, yeah, she just running around following a ball. But she was. That's the thing. Most children, when they get put in movies, are terrible. They can't yeah. act. The lines are garbage. She was extremely well done. She she knew what she was doing. She knew when to act cute. She knew when to be scared. She and she knew how to act. Yeah. And her lines, I really felt like this was a seven, like a little 
five or seven yeah, year old yeah. girl. Like it never really felt like, well, that's clearly someone pretending to be a little girl, but like, you know. Yeah. Even uh, when she no, was it down really yeah. felt like it. Yeah, when she was down in the sub flipping switches and stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's what little kids do. Hey, I'm in a, I'm a, yeah, yeah. I'm in a submarine. <laughs> Do you know how fucking awesome it would have been if I was seven and I could go in a submarine? I oh, would have been just, I would have been on the floor comatose from too much awesomeness. Yeah, dude. Sick and, as hell. Hey, what are you flicking switches for? Because that's what a kid does. <laughs> because Who does I'm this seven. do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, again, very well written. Yeah. Nothing scared me more in the Meg than when I thought she was about to die. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. God, no, not the little <laughs> child! Yeah, yeah, it's very hard to actually convey that in film, because, like, in real life, of course, you don't want kids to die. I'm Actual, taking a real well, well, in real life. Yeah, in most movies, I'm like, yeah, kill the little kid, you're being annoying. Yeah. Get him uh, out of my hair. But, yeah, taking a controversial stance here. I'm not pro-kid dying. In real life. In real life. But in movies, it's kind of hard to really convey that sense of, like, oh, God, somebody protect the children. Uh, but this well, movie doesn't... Well, someone think of the children! Yeah, yeah, you don't really think about that, because you know it's all make-believe. And the kid is probably just fine. Um, I, had a, I had a few moments when I was watching Orphan, where I was like, oh, oh, God... I don't know. Is this going to be okay? Yes, it's going to be okay, and I know this, but... Well, heck, You uh, lose yourself in the film. Remember the kid from The Shining? I mean, yeah. That's, he, that's another example. Yeah, he didn't even know he was in a horror movie until, what did he say, like, five years later when he watched the movie? He goes, wait, that was a horror movie? Wait, those two little girls were bad? He's like, I remember playing with them on set between takes. Well, and that's the thing. He has, like, this very childlike innocence, which also makes you, like, the fact he's seeing all this scary stuff is just like, oh, God, give away from it. Somebody get him out of here. Um, but, yeah, you get that same feeling of, like, suspense when the little girl's in danger in the Meg. Uh, and it's really, really hard to do that. Mm. So, and huzzah. Yeah, so the Meg, the first Meg movie, wholeheartedly two thumbs up, you oh, know, five out really, of five stars. Yeah, they it's, do they do a lot of things in film that are hard to do, um, like, like there's nothing I can say to really complain about it unless it's just nitpicking. Yeah. I mean, even, Actually, you know, now that I think about it, in the first Meg, there is really no yeah, bad guys other uh, than the Megs themselves. Well, there was that guy who was, like, trying to, like, uh, the one guy. Are you talking about Dwight from uh, The Office? Yeah, yeah, that's him. So, I don't really consider him as evil. He wanted this to succeed. He wanted to find out what was down there. It was... But he was also doing so in the stupidest way possible. Yeah, but here's the thing. When he realized that people were going to die from the Meg, he actually went out himself and tried to kill the Meg. Granted, it was because, like he says, do you have any idea how, how many people can die? Every lawsuit from that is going to tank stock prices. So he wasn't doing it for moral reasons, but he still knew he had a duty to kill the Meg, that he was at least partially at fault for bringing into the surface. Fair so, he did try. And, yeah, he died. But I kind of felt bad. Normally when the bad guy dies, you're like, ah, you get what you deserve. This one was, oh, that kind of sucks. He probably could have done more. Yeah. yeah he definitely, uh, it would have been cool if he would have been like, wait a minute, this whole thing was stupid and I'm being stupid. If yeah. he had that moment. But you never really get it, and I kind of feel like... Oh, yeah. Yeah, sure. Well, there were a couple of people I would consider kind of dicks in the movie, but yeah, no one like, was the straw man. No, no, one, no was, one was truly the bad guy. Yeah. They just, yeah and there and was, they made a phenomenal movie from it. Oh, yeah. Un unfortunately, then they made The Meg 2, and it suffered from sequelitis. Uh, a lot it, of movies suffer from that. It, it was, uh, again, it follows suit. 
Uh, the first one, I feel like, will be remembered as a classic. And uh, everything after that clearly won't be. I don't know. I, I feel like they could make a Meg 3 and they could go, okay, this is what worked in the first movie. This is what didn't work in the second movie. I think we could fix it. I, I, mean, I, I feel like they could do something. In theory, but I don't think they're going to do that. True. I feel like uh, the Meg 2 kind of... I don't. I'm not gonna say it bombed, but I don't. I haven't really heard anything about it. Well, and I don't think it did very well. Maybe, maybe it's just because, like, again, I looked at the first Meg, and I really can't think of anything particularly wrong with it. Yeah, every uh, everything had great tension when it needed to. Yeah. Um, everything, and it, it, it didn't stay action oriented like that. There were moments when they think they're safe. So, and they start goofing off. I mean, let's face yeah. it. If you had a very stressful 24 hours and almost got eaten by a Meg and then you finally kill it, would I too would be like, okay, we need to blow off some steam. It's been a very stressful little bit. Hey, dude, you should stick your head there. Grr, roar. Yeah, yeah. We're all <laughs> having fun with it. And then out of nowhere, like, oh, Another crap. Meg. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, yeah. Like, these, that is a good... Part of it is just that it is written really, really well, and the people actually feel like people. I don't know if that's on the actors or the writing, but it does feel very realistic. You can see these people. You've met these people. Yeah. Uh, the Meg 2. Everyone's from outer space. We're, we're joking? <laughs> but I can see it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Now we have space megs. Yeah, oh god. Oh my god, remember? That's we... happening in the Meg 3. They're just going to see fucking sharks. No, no. Space. Remember when you and me talked? We're like, oh my god, the only thing that could make this movie worse is if they did sharks in outer space. And I looked it up. Oh, and god. there is a movie with sharks in outer space. We will most look. Uh, and it definitely. was a Sharknado movie. Oh, of course it was. The shark. <laughs> The, like, that's the whole thing, like, I respect and appreciate everything about the first Meg movie because everything worked, everything worked out really well. I watch Sharknado movie because it's a train wreck. Oh, I know. Like, and this I was, can't look away from all this happening. If I remember correctly, the Outer Space one, I think they said was either Sharknado 4 or 5. Remember, there's like eight of these. Oh yeah, it's ridiculous. Uh, I kind of feel bad that we didn't watch more for this specific yeah, episode. We, we might maybe do an episode on just shark movies. Of course, we've already mentioned Jaws like five times on the podcast, but... Yeah, but I mean, we could start time. doing like Sharknado. Remember the twin-headed shark? Oh god, yes. Oh man, so... Why are there so many bad shark movies? Uh, because it's really fun, goofy. I, I think that's the thing, like, in juxtaposition to, like, Jaws or the Meg, uh, with things like the Two-Headed Shark or Sharknado. It is entertaining, no matter what. Yeah. Like, you may not enjoy it as a film, you may not be able to respect it, like I do with Sharknado, I have a hard time really respecting how much effort was put forth into it. Because it's stupid. Yeah. But so, I and, still enjoy watching it. And can I say, the most... There's there's two parts in Meg 2 All right. that really disappoint me. Okay. Uh, the first one I'm going to mention is, as a character, the Kraken. They had a Kraken in it. Oh, yeah. And it did very, very little. I feel like there was so much wasted opportunity. You have a fucking Kraken. Yeah. And you destroy... You you attack people on a dock. Come on, there's a Kraken. Pull down a sailing ship at least. Come on. I mean, the Yorkie was made a quick returning cameo. Yeah, yeah, there was a little Yorkshire Terrier. It, it, also came back from the yeah. from the I, second movie. I feel like his name was in reference to something, but I don't remember what it was. What if it was like Gaiju or something? <laughs> no. No, it was like I, I wanna say it was like Pippin in yeah. reference to like Lord of the Rings, but I don't Possibly? think that's right. So I feel like the Kraken was a very big missed opportunity that they could have yeah. used to a much bigger effect. It literally yeah. was 
oh, it's going to come by and pluck one or two people and then get eaten by a Meg. Yeah. It's just there was so much more it could do. Well, I kind of feel like they didn't want to upstage the Meg itself. And I get that, but if that's the case, why have a Kraken in your movie? Yeah, fair enough. But the other thing that really bothers me is when they're in oh. the Mariana Trench. Oh, boy. Okay, so... I know this one. Yeah. I have, I have <laughs> complained about it a lot. So... Uh, yeah, in, in, I, was, I was, like, just sitting there drunk at this point, just watching the movie, like, eh, that's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> so, there's there's a whole part where they're, mar- where they're in the trench... Um, their ships get damaged and don't immediately implode. Okay, that's fine, you know, that's, yeah. uh, it's, it's, it's the brand new ships that can handle this kind of thing. It's okay, not... movie magic, I get that. Oh no, our ships crashed and we literally need to walk along the bottom. Oh god, isn't that a lot of pressure? Don't worry, we have mechanized suits to spe- yeah. that we specifically designed to be able to survive these pressures. Kind of like the oh, power okay, armor it's Fallout Four. Yeah, okay, it's bullshit, but yeah. movie yeah. MacGuffin. Yeah, I'm willing to suspend my disbelief because you know you at least tried. Yeah, and, and effort was put forth. Yeah, and everything's good. Yeah, but so far, then so far. They're trapped on one end of a station that was secretly built in the trench. They're they're Which, over. All the doors are sealed. All the life pods but have been jettisoned. To me, is already kind of ridiculous, just because like they have like essentially like a trading outpost in the Mariana Trench. Yes. Uh, which immediately is like, dude, like five people have been here before the events of this movie. What the fuck? Yeah. So. And it just, it, it bothers me. Because they're like, oh my god, we're going to be trapped. We're going, we're either going to run out of air, we're going to just, th- you know, you're, you're trapped down here. And uh, how many people can get down to you? Oh, right, the people that are currently being attacked by terrorists. Yeah. I don't, I think they're a or little the busy. terrorists themselves. Yeah. So, they're trapped. And what does, uh, what does Jason Statham do? Hey, I have a... And what did he call that? An impacted sinus? Oh, a deviated septum. Yeah, a deviated septum, which basically means if he's not careful, he can get stuff into his sinuses, and that really sucks. For those of you who have it, you know exactly what I mean. Yeah. So he's like, oh, don't worry. The bullshit fucking science in this. Hey, remember, water can't compress, ever. Okay, you are correct. So, if I get into one of these empty pods and let it slowly fill up with water, and then fucking snort it up my nose, I'll be completely full of water and can swim at over 13,000 feet underwater. Remember how there's literally more than a ton of pressure every square inch of your flesh? But it's okay, I snorted some water in it and I can fucking swim. Behold, Jason Statham is Aquaman. Now I can't want that. I'm sorry, I'm, a li- I'm still a little ticked off by this. Oh, no, no, I get it. I'm just, like, I've watched way too many shitty movies. It is unfortunate because it is a sequel to an actually good film. Right. If, if all of them were crap, I'd just chalk it up to, okay, it's yeah. a goofy movie. Like, if something you this stupid good. happened in, like, Sharknado 5, no one would give yeah, it a second. Yeah, nobody would care. But... You're literally in a movie that has done so well up to this point. Granted, there were the swimming lizards from Jurassic period times. Those were kind of yeah, odd, but still, I, that's I the whole point. Those out, but yeah, but maybe. still, you're in the Mariana Trench, where all of this life is being basically sealed away in a very special biodome. Nothing gets in, nothing gets out. It's a time capsule. Try telling that to Polish Shores. Don't worry, he never left the 90s. You're safe. Oh, thank God. <laughs> but, ah! Again, <laughs> I understand the suspension of disbelief, but there's a goddamn limit! Oh yeah, there's a point where you're like, okay, now, this is bullshit. Yeah. And that, that was my bullshit meter. Yeah. At max. The rest of the movie, eh, okay, it wasn't yeah. bad. I can't, I can't really... It, it is one of those things, whereas, like, in the first movie, I couldn't really find anything to really complain about. This one, you can. 
Yeah. If you really want to. It's not hard, up especially until, in the first half. Yeah, up until that point, you're just like, I mean, it's okay. It's all right. You, you kind of feel sort of like Alien 3. It was an all right movie, but in an amazing franchise. So yeah. you kind of feel like... I mean, I'm sorry, Ripley Scott. Ripley Scott? You know who I'm talking about. The main chick. Scorny Weaver. What's her name in the movie? I Ripley. Thought, yeah. But R Ripley Scott is not... Is that is Was that not her full name in the movie? The director's name was Ridley Scott. Huh. I, I think that's where you're Yeah, about. yeah, I'm probably getting myself mixed up with that, but but yeah. still just uh, either way. Uh, we gotta yeah. get we gotta we, we gotta get away from Meg too. And I will sit here and rant for a while if yeah, I Yeah, well it's just like it kinda has sort of an alien three moment where it's just an alright mo movie but in a really good franchise. Yeah. But then that comes up and you're just like, oh okay. In a movie in which there is a killer shark, you have jumped the shark without it even being in the scene. And, and, and the thing that really pisses me off is it's not like they're not saying there's not pressure. Remember not five minutes ago when one of your people's face mask cracked and it imploded, murdering them instantly? Oh yeah, that But happened. Jason Statham oh, yeah. snorted some water. He's fine. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, he is powered by his impressive guy, Richie resume. And uh, thus, by his hairy pecs. Thus he cannot die. Mm. Because Guy Ritchie won't let him die. Why? <laughs> so, it's the first movie, a definite watch. 10 oh, out of absolutely. 10. I, I, I loved it. Yeah, brilliant movie. Uh, uh, it's, it, may not, it may not be hailed as the classic I'm making it out to be, but at the same time... Even if you look away from that, it's still a really fun shark movie with, like, Jason oh, yeah. Statham, and he's really, really And cool. even the second movie does have some good moments in it. Yeah, again, the if, people do feel yeah. like people once more. So watch, like, the first quarter of the movie, skip the middle, and then go straight to the third act, and you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, and... Yeah, some of the some of the effects towards like the climax are really really fun. Oh yeah, uh, they get attacked by dinosaurs in a helicopter. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, like there's there's good things happening. Don't don't make it out to where we think this is a terrible movie that is completely irredeemable. And it's not, but but once they start going underwater, yeah. until they surface, just expect just. Go get some popcorn. Yeah, yeah. Go make a sandwich, or yeah. you know, just you're you're not gonna miss much. No, you're no. Just gonna get angry. Yeah. Well, I did. Yeah. We so, <laughs> I probably shouldn't, but again, I, my expectations were so high because of the first movie. Well, and I've just watched enough crappy movies that I just like, yeah, dude. Deviated septum. I'm going with it. It's stupid, but I'm going with it. And I just, I couldn't. I'm sorry. Yeah. Alright, so that's, uh, that was our first of our 2023 Halloween episodes. Yeah, I'm kind uh, of excited. We got some ideas, we got some plans, we don't know how it's going to unfold. Yep. But we are hoping to put forth... A couple of episodes. Yeah, and um, we can only hope that the finale will be better than last year because we were really, oh. really sick during Oh, that. God, we were dying. And, uh, yeah, it's actually kind of ironic because right now I'm recovering from a flu. So it's already a good sign. Right. I got COVID. Pat had COVID. We, I still we can't worked. taste anything. Hey, see, now you can go vegetarian and it doesn't matter. Yeah, I can, I can eat real kosher now. Oh, yeah. Alright, so, that'll be all for this episode, and yeah. we hope to see you next time. Later, taters.